this story. I had somebody uh, call me. She texted me and then she called me yesterday morning. She'd done an inter intro to Traeger. And she was looking for a practitioner. She wanted to, to have a female practitioner. And, and could I help her find one? And we were talking. And she goes, she said, you know, that Traeger class was so incredible for me. She said it was like being in the river of life. Which I, I said, wow, man, can we use that? Because that's a great phrase. Because Traeger does, it's very oceanic. And she goes, yeah, if I keep talking about it, I'm going to start crying. Mm -hmm. And uh, so anyway, the point of it was that um, Traeger, you kind of slosh people around. And that's and you get this rhythm going. And then you can use that rhythm in certain ways. So you'll see some of that. Um, so <coughs> when you start with Traeger... Ideally, you try and come into a space of, you know, being as present as you can be and your hands to be nice and soft. Because the experience of Traeger is of people to have their own body moving, not to be moved. Everything is good. It's good to do stuff to people. I love doing stuff to people. Traeger's just got a, it's a different thing happening. All right, so you kind of come into the space are you okay? Mm -hmm. right. And uh, if you think of things like ultrasound and how those things work, they're kind of sonar based. Where when you put motion into something, you can kind of get a feeling for what's happening underneath by the way the waves bounce off of it. And that's how you get information and trigger by moving things around. <clears throat> and there's sort of a hypnotic thing going when you find a rhythm that is in sync with the person's structure. You know, if it was a really small person, it's going to be a faster rhythm, you know, blah, blah, blah. But there's a, ri there's a range where you where a person's gonna feel like you've met them. So for example, if you sit on a rocking chair, you like find the rhythm that feels good in your rocking chair. You, know, you don't generally go super fast, you don't go super slow, it's somewhere in between. So once you have that rhythm established, it's like the backbeat to the song. And then, so this is, so this is Tara's rhythm. Boom, boom, boom. Boom, 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 ba boom, boom. And then you can just start to improvise off that, and you just start taking the tissue and um, giving it different experiences and different vectors, all with this thing going on the whole time. So <coughs> it's an exercise in staying in the present, staying connected to the person and then playing, which is part of what the fun is. So this is Tara's abdomen. You know, you don't, I wouldn't usually start with somebody's abdomen because, you know, it's a vulnerable place to be hanging out. But because it is vulnerable, I'm just going to stay on the surface for a bit because I'm just establishing a connection with her. But as that happens, if I feel that she's safe and comfortable and accepting and there's an innate curiosity there, then we'll just play a little bit. And I try and stay relaxed because I don't want to be giving her this experience. You know, what? it's not, you don't want to be have this super intense feel, it's just kind of a playful, easy thing. And then in terms of like a neuromuscular therapy, like there's certain things that I can feel. So like the oblique muscles that come off the ilium, stomach muscles, you'll learn more about them if you don't already know. Hers feel pretty different from right to left. So these muscles on this side, they feel that they could have a little more elasticity to me. And again, I didn't do any testing with her, right? Except this is maybe what you would call motion testing. Now oftentimes what you feel you can get confirmed, you know, or find out if you're wrong. But a lot of times, you know, you'll find out, oh, 
had some scarring on this side or what you feel is oftentimes clinically valid. So that's all I'm just playing. What I'm doing is I'm using waves to bring motion into this area here. And the waves are what help to relax her. It's not me doing stuff. Just a different way to relax people. Just like if you were in a hammock. You don't need a massage when you're on a hammock. You just, it's already relaxing. So you can take that same kind of thing. Sorry, I know I'm in your way. But I just wanted to show you Trigger from this vantage point too. And you can work up here. And all the while, while it, feel, while it looks like I'm just doing all this stuff to her, which I guess I am, I'm really listening to the tone in her muscles that are saying how comfortable she is. So if there's any sense that she's like, I don't know what you're doing, but it's making me nervous or something like that, you just go smaller until you create a rapport with somebody. And the idea is that if you start slow and patient, and establish rapport, people will relax more <coughs> than if you try and power through. So, blah, 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 blah. Now I'm up in her neck. And so the rhythm is a little different. If I'm down here and I've got her torso, it's a bigger rhythm. But if I come to her neck, it's a little different thing here. And I'm just feeding movement, washing movement through her joints getting synovial fluid going, kind of getting the suboccipitals out of our cell phone mode, so to speak, and just reminding her of what life is like beyond the mind. Just that feeling of being rocked, being cradled, of free movement, unimpeded by gravity, and we're just dancing together. That sounds like a womb or something. Yeah, it's just a womb with like a hard tile floor. <laughs> ah. <sighs> okay, and because I'm dancing with her, I'm going, we're going up, and then we're coming down, and we're going elongating. We're going up, we're going to the side. Whoops. That didn't quite work, so we'll slow down. Because it's a dance, it's actually extremely fun as a therapist to do. And I'm always careful not to tell my clients how much fun I'm having because I'm afraid that they would suggest that we just do this as a trade. It's so awesome for me. It's, a, it's just a joke, but I want to take it. But basically, I'm having as much fun as my clients was the point of the story. It was really funny. I'm serious about this. <laughs> so this is the leg. And just in this right here, I already have a ton of information about the back line of her body, about her Achilles, about the way her heel connects up into her hip. And one of the things that I know is that what I'm doing isn't helpful. So these are just these little hints you get when you work with the body this way. You just, she doesn't like it, you know? And now some of it's conscious, people are in pain, but some of it's unconscious. It's just a pattern that they have. Like if I was to make up a story, let's just say that Tara one time jumped from a rock when she was camping or something and maybe hurt her heel kind of badly or something like that, that would be the kind of thing that could account for what I feel. So her body's going, whoa, 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 why are you trying to stretch my heel? Like I need to protect, I need to protect. So you feel these protecting patterns and then you honor them and then you find ways to, to work with the individual that is, feels safe to them. So if my goal for Tara is to have elongation through her hip joint and out through her leg, we're most likely to get there in the Traeger approach if I honor who she is and work with what, she, what she's presenting and what's comfortable to her. And if I honor that and 
and I can do it in a way that feels safe and that is safe, I don't mean just emotionally, but physiologically, then it's likely together we'll find a way to get there. I'm not going to be, you know, doing these protocols to get her there. I'm going to be working with her. So in this moment, when I'm feeling like she's uncomfortable with it, then in Traeger, I'm going to find ways to reestablish a feeling of comfort. Whether it's on the emotional level, the muscle guarding level, the nervous system level. And you guys are learning compression, so what you might see is that I'm leaning in and I'm compressing her hip joint. When people are uncomfortable, compression feels good, right? Sometimes they're called hugs. Or in babies, they're called swaddling. You know, if you pick up a baby and you hold it in a jangling way, it's not as effective as if you just, they don't want to be squeezed, but they want to be firmly held. Even sensory contact with care. So that's what I'm trying to provide care now. It's like, I get it, let's give you some care. And it's all a somatic conversation. So the way I'm working with her hip right now is I'm trying to snuggle her and give her care. And I could describe it physiologically by just compressing the hip joint. That would be the other way to say it. Now that she's feeling safer, I'm gonna say, hey, you wanna play a little bit now? What would you think about doing something like this? And she's like, well, that does sound kind of fun, let's try that. Whereas before, she was busy guarding. And then you give them experiences that feel good, you let them kind of revel in those for a while, and then I'm telling you, this leg feels so different now. It's just this big, hydrated, fun toy to play with. Now, I come back here, <clears throat> and this feels different to me. I don't know if it looks different. I don't know if you can see a difference, but the whole tone of her leg is different now. And this is Traeger. This is like, we're on the same team. My job is to honor her, to be with her, to support her with experiences that feel comfortable. And that's my job. She doesn't have to, she doesn't have to do anything but give me information. Now this movement is kind of a maybe. And when you do Traeger for a while, you develop this. So you guys know that game Red Light, Green Light? Mm -hmm. Do you guys all watch Squid Games? Uh. It's given a different meaning to Red Light, Green Light, but you guys remember pre-Squid Games, Red Light, Green Light? <laughs> That's what Traeger is. So I do this and I go Red Light, Green Light. And she's like, oh, Green Light's cool. All right, well, let's give you another experience. And then, you know, if it's a red light, it's, okay, I got it, red light. Let me find a way that meets you. And what the ultimate, goal, what the ultimate outcome is, is muscle tone that's in a more relaxed state, nervous system that's in a more relaxed state, unconscious mind that feels more integrated through the body, and just kind of this relaxed, integrated happiness. Is it kind of like the Feldenkrais a little bit, but you're doing the movements? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, just really, it's just kind of crazy because, you know, you think about muscle tone, you think, oh, you need to stretch it and compress it and stretch it again, and then, you know what I mean? But yeah. you're just kind of rocking and saying that that'll be enough. Something like that. Yeah. Basically, if the... If the mind feels comfortable, it will tell the muscles, I'm into this, let's reel out a little more line. And so you don't have to do it through force. Just like if you're on a hammock and you're all tense, it's not that much fun. You want to relax and feel the wave of the hammock, so your brain's like, all oh, you guys are going to relax because I want to enjoy the hammock. It's a, just a different way to create relaxation through the vestibular system. And then, uh, Tara, do you want to just do like a little commentary, just free associate what you feel here and there as we work? Sure. So as he's moving my shoulder around, I'm feeling like the, the connective tissue in, in the, my entire upper arm 
like relax, but I'm also getting a sensation in the top of my thigh. The connective tissue here in this whole chain is starting to kind of just melt as he's working up here on my arm. It's affecting my entire chain on my right side, which is where my back injury was. And like as he's up here on this upper arm, like the back of my calf is kind of slightly unwinding. And so then add now as he's moving down into my my leg, now I'm getting a forearm um, release a little bit, and he's not even up there. <sighs> my thoracic ribs are starting to kind of loosen up. Um, I can feel a softening in my hip right here, um, in my sacrum, and he's down there on my leg. And my triceps here, even though he started up here, that's continuing with the jostling. It's continuing to melt, and he's working on my leg. Basically, Traeger is just like, it's just like kindergarten and playing with finger paints. And you're doing it through the sensory nervous system. So if I feel like some tension in her outer quad or IT band, and I just think to myself, no, I want it to feel kind of soft and gushy and hydrated and, and uh, springy. Then I just play with it and think about it and kind of like you're at a pottery wheel. You just bring it to what you want it to be. I know it sounds weird. It is weird. But it works. And part of the way Milton Traeger thought about it was you have a sensation in your mind about the way something could feel and their mind has a distortion around this area, which is why it doesn't feel good in the first place. So what you're doing is you're communicating to their mind the happiness of a healthy, hydrated, vastus lateralis. So I'm thinking it, I'm moving it through my hands, it's going through her system, up to her brain, and when her brain goes, Oh, like, is that what you're talking about? You're talking about, like, a hydrated, elastic vastus lateralis? Like, okay, man, let's, let's give that a try. And then the muscles just start changing under your hands. So and what happens when she starts walking again? Well, that's, that's a good question. Usually things are different. Because in Traeger, you're not only changing the muscles, you're changing the proprioceptive connection through the body. And because the ear crystals are moving around, you're changing her sense of balance. So people usually will get up off the table confused because they're not in their old pattern anymore. So if they walk for a little bit and they go, well, hey, man, I kind of like this new one, it can kind of stick. And it doesn't require as much time sometimes as other kinds of modalities. Now, when I'm lifting her here, I'm not just cranking her up. I'm coming up with my whole body like this because see, then I can stay within this thing. You know, like on a pottery wheel, when they kind of do this thing and it comes up, it's all in rhythm and the whole thing's together. It's not just isolated. This is what, this is the pottery wheel. And you know, so I can just tell you that this is as fun for me as like playing music or anything else I might do. It's just a super fun modality, happens to be extremely effective. So you can pretend that you're doing therapy. But really what you're doing is just having fun. And if you love to help people, it's just such a bonus because you get to have fun and help people simultaneously. So I'm going to stop, but basically now I'm really interested in this portion of her IT band. And, you know, I'm using the pottery wheel to create a different IT band. Now, if you guys learn, you know, deep tissue, you'll be doing this stuff to make that happen which is cool. I can even do that with a Traeger sensibility, where the oscillations of her body create a little pin and stretch action, you know. So there's different ways to do things. Traeger is not better than other ways, but it can be more effective with holding patterns. Because if the brain is like, I have to hold my IT band because my knee's not secure, 
that's cool. But what if the knee wasn't secure like 10 years ago, but they already had an ACL replacement and it is secure? How do you update the software here? Just because you can come in here and just get a sledgehammer or a rolling pin and relax it doesn't mean that you've convinced the brain that it's safe. Maybe you have, or maybe you just two days later, it's gonna be back to where it was. And that's where Traeger shines because I don't dominate it into submission. I just talk to it, see if there's any experience it's willing to accept, and then build on it and create a movement vocabulary to support the changes and then it changes. I don't change it, it changes. The brain changes. And then you get these kind of miraculous things sometimes. One thing that happened for me that I can tell you about is this guy, he had these zipper scars down his knee, you know, which they used to do back in the day. And uh, his knees, this is like, this guy was in his 60s. And these surgeries were 20, 25 years ago. But his knees were like this. He couldn't straighten his legs 20 years later, and they were swollen. He just lived with it. And it was just because his software wasn't updated. He didn't know that he could do it, so if you try to make him do it, it's just scaring the nervous system. And then you have a backlash. I just did Traeger, you know, I'm like, okay, well, let's take you where you feel safe. Now, what if we just did a little bit here? Well, that's weird. I guess that doesn't really hurt, does it? Okay. So you're very patient, and then a little more, okay. And then after about five sessions, I hadn't seen the guy for a while, and I get an email from him. He's in Ethiopia on like a water, some kind of water mission he was doing. And he goes, man, I flew to Ethiopia, which wasn't, I didn't enjoy that. I was pretty swollen. But he goes, the day after, I started walking, and I met my younger brother. He's 10 years younger than me, and I've been out walking him every day, and I feel great. He's like, I don't know what this stuff is that you're doing, but thank you. And I didn't do anything. I just played with them real easy in this Traeger way, and you can, you can have these monster changes for those kind of patterns. And these are people who've had lots of other therapies. And it's not the skill of the therapist. You know, you gotta be reasonable, but it's just the work, it's a, it's a beautiful work. All right, so that's your Evangelicals Traeger sermon. All right, you guys want to see Should what we get she's... get some people on the table now? Yeah, now hold on a sec. Okay. So, so this is Tara. Okay, and what, what Tara just did is, is sort of a Tara thing. <laughs> um, which, you know, I hope it's okay because I didn't ask her for permission to say mm -hmm. this. But do you notice how she's ready to pop off? She's already done. <laughs> so, um... So that might be the same kind of thing as going to these edges that she talks about, like, I think I need to overcome this, Wee! and she goes to these big edges. Mm -hmm. So from just a trigger point of view, it might be like, let's graduate the nervous system back into an active phase. So rather than her like flinging off the table and getting everybody else on, which I appreciate because she's really thinking of you guys, <laughs> I'll just say, okay, Tara, how are you feeling? Wonderful. Okay, when you're ready, can you just slowly come to a position where you're just sitting with your feet off the side of the table? Yes. And so this is just a triggery idea of the nervous system. You graduate people back into a, a state of integration. And so before you get up, can you just tell me anything you notice in your body? My low back feels released. feels brighter and my arms feel tingly. Okay, tingly in a good, in a good way, way or a numb way? In a, in a good way. Okay, yeah. like there's energy mm -hmm. coursing there's through? There's energy coursing through my, um, okay. my hands feel very tingly and sensitive. Okay. Yeah. Do you want to try walking and seeing what that feels like? Mm -hmm. and just go slow and just feel your weight shifting. I just want to say what, what he's doing right now is also part of a Traeger session. It's, it's getting people to recall how they feel in a good way off of the table. Now, I don't remember how she was before. I didn't really check. But can you kind of see how she's pretty integrated? She's just sort of, she's got a springiness in her. Mm, it 
feel good. Okay. I feel good all over. So I, I shared with the class when I was here before that a lot of times after massage, I get up off the table and I don't feel integrated and I'll, I'll be really nervy and just kind of hurt and I'll have to do a lot of squats and, you know, um, tighten my abs. And with Traeger, I don't need any of that when I get up off the table. I get up off the table and I just feel really integrated. I don't have any pain. And part of that is because you can kind of work the whole body even while you're working on it. And the, the wave of proprioceptive integration is going all the way through. All right, does anybody have any uh, observations or comments or anything? Yeah. So you're kind of like tapping into her just overall awareness of like, you know, her, her, her tend her, uh, her areas of discomfort. And then you basically introduce her to that you know, and then she's aware the whole time though. Whereas with massage, people fall asleep sometimes. So I can see how that would be more helpful to have somebody be alert while you're doing something to them. So they don't just fall asleep and wake up, you know? I think, you yeah. know what I mean? That's part of it for sure. People could fall asleep still. I think what you're, what you're getting at is that you're introducing people to areas where they're having a little bit of a challenge. And then you're working with them in a way that's safe to help them come through. And that, and they'll do that with you even when they're asleep. Mm. You got me. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Just to comment, it just seemed like um, the whole thing seemed more of like an invitation. That's exactly what it's intended to be. It just really reminds me of Felton Christ mm -hmm. a lot. Well, they knew each other. Like I said, Cousin Christ and Milton Traeger knew each other. They, they developed the work independently, but there's a lot of similarities to the work. Any other 